If you look down and see the stars, what do you see when you look up? Hi, I'm Andrew, this is Splash Page, and this is something we haven't done before, but uh, I've been watching Critical Role for a few years now, caught up on all the campaigns over there, and they've had a miniseries coming out recently, getting ready to watch the final episode of EXU Calamity tonight. I hear it's supposed to be amazing and long and I'm rearing up and ready to go and I need someone to talk to about it. So I was hoping you guys would be the ones. But after years of watching Matt Mercer run this game and falling in love with him and that cast, I did not think I could be surprised by something that came out of Critical Role. And yet, with EXU Calamity, they've done it. Brennan Lee Mulligan is running a game that is beyond anything I've ever seen before. And I wanted to talk a little bit about tone and beginnings. A lot of great books, most of the best books, I would say. I can't say all of them, but most of the best books, great introduction. Uh, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was a cold April morning and the clocks were striking 13. Call me Ishmael. Books and stories, they start, they start out and they set a tone, and what Brennan Lee Mulligan did with the beginning of EXU Calamity is phenomenal. Now, I hadn't known of him or his work or his name prior to this uh, miniseries, and now I'm going to have to start diving into all of his other work with Dungeons & Dragons games, because he's phenomenal, and it's depressing that there's so much out there that I need to focus on now that I can't turn my attentions to other things just yet. Now, I've been watching Critical Role for many years, and basically it's a Dungeons & Dragons game, but it's high adventure and comedy first, right? Uh, the characters, the players are having fun, telling jokes, getting into fights. Uh, there's dark moments and intense moments for sure, but a big part of Critical Role has been comedy. When you have a show called Calamity, and you already know the outcome before you begin, it's smart to start things a little darker, which is kind of what Brennan did. He began, and if you haven't watched, go watch now. Okay. He began with a dream sequence, which we didn't know at the time was a dream sequence, but the room is bathed in red. The first words out of his mouth are fire. And then he describes how one of the characters is breathing heavy, but it feels like someone else is breathing in his body. It's confusing. Gravity doesn't work quite right. And he asks Louis Carrazzo to describe his character while keeping in mind that he has blood in his mouth. Now, this doesn't add to the story. It doesn't give the players clues as to what's happening. But man, does it set a tone. He could have started with any of the other characters. From here, he spent a solid half an hour introducing Xerxes, the paladin, and this crazy dream sequence where he's talking to his son and his son isn't really there and he's fishing in a pool of stars and he's talking to a dying deity who is begging for his life. And he closes with, when you look down, you see the stars. What do you see when you look up? And Louis takes a moment, steals himself, looks up. Brennan tells him he sees the ground coming at him fast. Wham! He wakes up. And then we look out over the city, Avalir, the beautiful, magical city. And it sets that he could have started with the description of the city. He did not. He could have started with Sam Regal, Loquacious' character, who he went to, jumped to next. And it really brought us into the lifeblood of the city and how the city works and how magical and wondrous and funny this show can be. But he started with Xerxes and this awful, scary dream sequence because that is what this show is. That's what this miniseries is. This is Brennan telling us, it doesn't matter what you do, it's going to turn out poorly as far as your characters are concerned. And I think it was an absolutely brilliant way to start off this miniseries. We get to a point in episode two where Xerxes is talking to Asmodeus, Lord of the Hells, and he's excited to do so, and he wants, as a player, as a character, he wants to talk to him, and he wants to see what his story is, and I don't think we'd have gotten there without that introductory scene that set it up, that gave him that moment of seeing this demon crying and begging for his life from this character 
Now he has an emotional investment in helping him out. Brandon is beautifully weaving this story to set up all these characters to do the wrong thing so that the calamity will occur because that is what necessarily has to occur in this situation, right? It's gorgeously done. I've watched each of these episodes two or three times a piece, and they're all four plus hours. This is a lot of my time and effort I put into these because it's such wonderful storytelling. The way Brennan tells a story, the way he weaves in and out of clues that we don't even know are clues. Okay, a moment I thought was pure storytelling genius was the introduction of Nidus, played by Lou Wilson. And we see him, he's this outgoing, top of his game kind of merchant. He runs a lot of stuff in the city. He's building things, very wealthy. And the way Brennan introduced him was by giving him a problem for his character to fix. He says, Nidus, you've got this problem. You have 100 wands. You need 200 wands. What are you going to do? And give him the room to start ordering his underling. Like, what are we going to do? We need to fix this problem. And then he brings in a third party that says, oh, here's a suggestion. And Nidus gets to say, absolutely, go do that. I solved the problem. Then he brings in another silly problem. He brings in a sphinx that is going to be marching in the parade of beasts. And the Sphinx is asked to roar in the parade, but the Sphinx is a thinking, speaking Sphinx. And he wants to give a speech, perhaps. And Nidus has to solve this problem and kind of settle down the Sphinx, and it's very important. And then he brings in another seemingly meaningless problem, where a character named Milo's friend, a magistrate, comes in and asks him for some extra magic, some extra ether. And Brennan lets him know, yes, this is something you do, but this guy's too low down for you to even worry about. So he gets to kind of blow him off, and then later when they meet up as a group, he'll ask the other characters, hey, did you tell this guy? Is there a leak? What do we got to do about this? Now, putting that after the wand situation and the Sphinx situation seems like, okay, we're just introducing you to Nidus. This is a guy who gets stuff done, and he does it very well, and he does it quickly and authoritatively. And then later, again, spoilers for at least the first three episodes, that Milo's friend character that came in and we thought it was nothing is a huge plot point later on in the show. He snuck that in by throwing it after a line of two other nonsensical things. I guess unless maybe the extra ones comes up again or the Sphinx attacks everyone, but I highly doubt it at this point. We kind of know by episode three where this story is going. At every moment, we have Brennan setting up our characters to react with the gravitas that he needs out of them by the way he tells this story. Two, two instances. One, when we meet Pesha, Marisha Ray, for the first time. Pesha is this upper class, very powerful mage. And he tells her that she has a visitor. And he says, before we have this discussion, I need to know your reaction to seeing one of the true seven, one of the people that actually runs this city. Now, he could have just said, the guy that runs the city, one of the seven, very important guy is coming in. But the way he set it up, I need to know your reaction so that she has a moment to think about how she would react to this. Would she say, oh, my God, look at you? Would she, in her mind, she might not have even thought of it if he didn't bring it up that way, that she wouldn't react outwardly. But inside the back of her head, she's kind of freaking out going, what is this guy doing here? And when we meet Laren for the first time, played by Abrea. We see her in her workshop working on her engine. And Brennan asks her to describe what she's been doing and how she's doing it. And while watch that segment again, the introduction of Laren, it's beautifully done. Because, of course, these players have had backup backstory given to them prior. And they've looked at this and thought about it. But the way Brennan walks her through that, he's letting her make all her own choices while at the same time getting her to do exactly what he wants her to do and guiding her through that process with question asking, which is an important part of this game, of this of this version of Dungeons & Dragons. Because again, not all versions are the same. I've been watching Matt Mercer for years. There's some of that, but it's mostly high adventure and comedy, which is super fun to watch. This is different. This is darker. And this is, this is full-on Shakespearean tragedy. And that is a fine needle to thread that Brennan seems to be doing masterfully. And I'm going to end up watching an eight-hour episode of Critical Role tonight. And I'll probably watch it two or three times in the next week. Just because it's the way it's done is phenomenal. 
So I'm sorry if this has been a little rambly. This has been my thoughts over the last couple weeks on storytelling, on introductions, on setting a tone, and kind of on how to run a game, but on really just how to tell a story. And really all this is, is I'm desperate to talk to someone about the EXU Calamity. It's so amazingly good. So feel free to leave some comments and we can discuss theories and reactions and the best moments of this. I would say worst moments. I don't think there's been a bad moment of this and I've watched upwards of 12 hours already in the first three episodes. So please talk to me down in the comments. Let me know what you have to think and I will actively respond and work through this through. And if you like this video, and I hope you do, uh, I have a couple more ideas to talk through certain aspects of EXU Calamity, and perhaps we can move on and talk about Critical Role. And now I'm gonna have to start watching Dimension 20 because there's a guy out there named Brennan Lee Mulligan who's absolutely phenomenal at what he does and deserves to be watched. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I'm Andrew, this has been Splash Page, and I'll see you next time. Hey, Sean, I hear we have a new giveaway. Absolutely. Right now, we are giving away toys from Vox Machina. We are giving away two toys. The first is a Vax toy, and the second is a Percy toy. And we will be giving them away once we hit 2,500 subscribers. That is very cool. Just make sure you subscribe to our channel and leave a comment on this or any of our videos, and you'll be entered to win for free. Good luck to you all.